Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Ones Ready Podcast. It's Trent here. And, uh, you know, with a very special guest, none of the other guys could show up because I wanted to do this one all by myself. I'm a little selfish that way. So uh, for all the Marines out there that can't read the description, uh, our guest today is is Mike Kroger. And, uh, <laughs> hey, man. Uh, That's such a great start. <laughs> Poor Marines. Yeah, are, we, are you going to take a shot at all the branches in this? <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. I love it. So, uh, Mike, man, uh, thanks for coming on the podcast. Really yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, for like the the three people out there that may not know who you are or the the band you're affiliated with, if you wouldn't mind just giving us a, a quick background. So my name is Michael Kruger, and and um, in our family we pronounce it Kruger with the like a it sounds like two O's or a U. Um, and uh, I play the bass guitar in a rock and roll combo called Nickelback from Vancouver, Canada. Were you guys like hit any level of success with that band or, or how did that work? You know, we just keep fighting and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, I think it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you, you, as long as you keep punching sooner or later, there's no opponents left and, and, uh, we're still punching, you know, a lot of people don't really know, um, but, you know, we have actually um, done things since 2005. Uh, you know, w- we never stopped, honestly. We just released our 10th album uh, in November. Uh, the new record is called Get Rolling and for anybody who wants to go out and find it. But, um, yeah, we never stopped. Uh, the only thing that's actually had any success in, in slowing us down is COVID. But, you know, we're coming back out this summer, uh, you know, now that we're, we're allowed out of the house and um, we're going to we're going to come out and um, play some tour dates in north america we're really excited for that yep yeah no i was was looking at that and i actually i have the new album and i I really enjoyed it you know that that san quentin song especially i think that's the first single off of it uh you know it's good stuff so thank you you know it i'd be lying if i said i'd been a fan like forever but obviously like i remember before i joined the air force uh silver side up came out and you know like i rocked that in my car but like there's this weird thing that happens like i joined the air force i trying to get on team and like everything just kind of disappears for a while but Mm -hmm. Man, I, I really appreciate you having you on here. And for everybody out there that might be like wondering, like, why would I invite a bass player onto a podcast where we're talking to potential aspect war, you know, candidates about, you know, how to be successful in our community. And the way I see it is success is success is success. And the journey that you went on and all the, the things that you all had to go through, I think there's a lot of parallels between that and uh, and and what we ask our people to do. Um, so I, I did want to start with, you know, like I, I've, I've, lightly stalked you on the internet and seen some of your interviews so from the beginning you know if we go in chronological order like what was the plan in the beginning because we get a lot of questions like hey like should i join or, or what do i need to do and when am i ready and uh for for you all like was there a plan uh in the beginning and and all this other stuff like how did you get to it it, it was you know i i think for for um for your audience, you know, if they if they are people that are getting um, ready to to try to make a run at special operations or something like that, um, there is a, a distinct and tangible goal. Uh, you, you know, you, you're you're gunning towards a, a brass ring that you know everybody knows what it is. You know, you, you get you get selected, you, you make it through training, and then and then you go and get ready to, to get out in the field, um, and that's the that's the goal. You know, it, the becoming a rock star. Uh, path is way more amorphous. Uh, it, it's it, it's it's more uh, it, it's more journey of steps. You know, you, in the beginning we were playing music together, but we were playing covers music, and then it's there's a the decision. Well, what if we you know recorded our own music, and and then we did that, and then well, what if we could you know play live shows? Good did that then can we can we sell tickets on a regional level can we get on the radio can we sell some records so on and so on it slowly builds and builds and it's like one of those things where you know i don't know if it's in your list of questions but i get asked it all the time um you know how did you you know what 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 was the moment that you knew you had you know made it uh and and that that, that's an impossible question to answer because it it, uh the, the target was always not out of reach but the target's always on the horizon, you know, so you're always driving to that target. But then when you get to what you think was your target and your landing zone, it, it, it's on the horizon again. You know, it just, it just kind of yep. keeps going. So there, and, and then, and then, you know, if you, if you get lucky enough to, you know, have some of the, the fun that we've had, you know, um, 
songs performing well and people buying your music and people coming out to your shows, then it's just a matter of, well, can we keep going? You know, can, can we, um, you know, can, can we sustain this thing? Because you, 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 uh, you reach, you reach a level and, and, you know, I'm, I turned 50 last summer, uh, and you reach a level, a point in your life where you're like, it, you know, have I, have I reached the, you know, have I reached the top of the, am I, am I on the down, <laughs> am I on the downside of the mountain now? <laughs> right. Uh, it, it, you know, in a variety of ways, not just, you know, in the, in the, in the music game, but, but both physically, et cetera, uh, you know, you have your little midlife crisis, you, you buckle up for that one. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, you do have that, that kind of thinking where it's like, okay, now, you know, where, where am I, when, where am I going, you know, kind of thing. And, but, but it, yeah. the drive is the same, you know, continue to try to do your best work put out the best music you can and perform the best live show you can, you know, it, it's, uh, it, but it is different. It's a different goal. And, and it's, um, it, it, like I said, amorphous goal. It doesn't really just sit there and wait for you. It's always another step further, you know, because I remember in the beginning when we started doing, you know, uh, this stuff and there was just hordes of interviews, you know, they would give us like, eight or 12 hour days of interviews for weeks, you know? And, and, you know, it, it, at first it was just like, what the fuck are we doing this for? And, you know, you feel like you're doing it for the record label or your manager or anything. And then you, after about 20 years, you realize, Oh, I'm doing it for me, <laughs> you know? So you, yep. you, you struggle through that, but then you think there's going to come a day when you're not going to have to do that. And honestly, it's just, that's, that's not true. <laughs> you're going to have to do that. Uh, and hopefully, <clears throat> people want to talk to you, you know, like that's, that's one thing I remember very, very clearly in the, in the beginning of, of this whole sort of experience, uh, uh, times when, um, nobody wanted to talk to us. Nobody gave a shit, you know? So, so getting an interview, like getting you to approach me, it triggers the same kind of thing in me. It's like, holy shit, somebody wants to talk to me about, you know, what I do. That's, it's still good. You know, I'm not at the, I'm not at the, the level of uh, jadedness where I just don't want to talk to anybody. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a little more discerning about who I talk to, but I, I pretty much talk to, to anybody about this as long as people want to listen. Because I remember what it was like when people didn't, they didn't care. <laughs> yep. No, but I, I, I like what you said about the steps and like the, all those false summits, you know, because we, we talk yeah. about that all the time. Like if you don't, if you see that false summit and you know, we have a, a bunch of steps throughout our, our like training pipeline to get guys there, their berets and other, everything else. But if like, all you think is that false summit, you get there and you're going to get a rest. Like you, you got the wrong attitude. Like yeah, it's the journey, yeah. you know, like you need to enjoy today and get there. Otherwise, like if you burn yourself out and, and you, you, you expect something like expectations are the killer yes. of everything. Right. If you get to that false summit and you think like, this is it. And, and, and expect all these things to happen. And it's like, Oh, what's on the other side yeah. of that? It's more work. It's more work and or, or chasing that next that next rush or the next capability or the next thing mm -hmm. that you can get to. And it's it's, well, it's like parenting, so. you know, um, you know, uh, I don't I don't know if you have kids. I have two, two, uh, two children and, and um, they're, you know, now they're uh, they're my my uh, my son just turned 22 and my daughter turns 20 in June next month. And uh, it's the same thing. You know, you, you they're, they're new. And, and it's a hell ride, you know, it's just, it's just what it is. It's like a nonstop battle going in really guttural shit, literally everywhere. And, and you know, and you're like, Oh yeah. God, if we just get out of this, it's going to be fine. And then, and then the diapers go and it's like, ah, oh, fuck, this is so much easier. But then, you know, they're drawing with magic marker on your furniture or, you know, destroying something or, or almost electrocuting themselves, et cetera. So it, it, and it, and it continues to stack. You know, and, and then and then yeah. they're in school and they got to the school problems and they're, you know, interpersonal problems and maybe a little, uh, you know, a little little alcohol experience, you know, uh, they, then, you know, then they start driving, then they're driving yeah. and they're out there and then they move out. You know, and, but it never ends. Yeah. You see, this is the thing. It's the same thing that we were just talking about. The goal is always moving. And there, you know, and I think that, uh, that, that, uh, that little fella Jocko Willink says, you know, there is no finish line and it's absolutely true. There is no finish line in anything that that's, you know, and, and like, as you're, as you're teaching your, your people, um, and, and as I've learned from experience is, is, you know, th this is not the Olympics. There is no gold medal here. You don't get to the end and go, I did it. You know, it is not summiting Everest or whatever it, there, 
that this is this is an ongoing and consistent and never ending mission. <laughs> it's just as long as you're on, you know, on task, it's it's just going to keep rolling out in front of you. <laughs> and then it's yeah. not just you know well, any one of these things, right? It's not music. It's not you know doing special operations. It's not parenting. It's everything. That's the life the life journey. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I think that's what I was trying to say in the beginning, right? Like if you see the way in one thing, you can see the way in all things. And I think that's why I was so excited to get you on here. Just also because like your level that you've, you've hit success before, you know, and then you guys are keep, you keep going. And that's what I found fascinating is you guys are still cranking mm-hmm. everything out. And like, I, I think us people from the outside would be like, well, why didn't, why didn't you guys just stop? Like you could live, you know, the quote unquote oh, the yeah. life and, and not have to do all this stuff anymore. Like, why wouldn't you just stop? And it's like, I think it's a fundamental misunderstanding of the mentality that it took to get well it's also kind of it's akin to what you do uh in the way that um getting there sucks getting yourself ready to perform doing what you do and doing what i do sucks you go through those uh those setbacks and um you know plenty of people telling you you'll never make it we have that too you know um the and then the moment you start to rise, there's going to be people try to push you down. Um, and, and that's in your world too. I'm sure there, there's a, 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 an expression I learned in Hawaii called the bucket of crabs analogy. Have you ever heard of the bucket of crabs before? You, you so. see, I learned this on a boat <laughs> out, off the, off Hawaii, uh, off of the Island of Maui. And a guy d- told me that, that, uh, the people are like a bucket of crabs. You, you don't have to put a lid on a bucket of crabs because when one of the crabs starts to climb out, all the others grab them and pull them back down. Yep. Bucket of crabs. This is, we got to be careful to not be a bucket of crabs <laughs> yeah, because the one thing those crabs don't yeah. do is help each other out. <laughs> That's what we need yep. to do. We need to not be that, you know, and, 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 um, and I've learned that lesson uh, that people, nobody, you know, I guess it's the, um, it's the it's the the navy operators say that it pays to be a winner. Maybe in your community, that's a that's another uh, uh, emphasized motto. Um, nobody likes a winner. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's human nature. We've talked about this, and and you know, um, it's it's when when people come to us and the kids come to us and they're like, "Hey, my parents don't want me to do this," or my friends, everybody's asking why I would I would do this thing. You know, like, and then people are telling me I'm not good enough for all this other thing. I think that's just people will show you who they are and, and, and throw their own insecurities yeah. at you because they can't do it. And like, I always say, like, you move far enough up that mountain and people will probably ask you, like, how do you deal with all those, you know, the, the haters or whatever, you know, and you have that CT, <laughs> on your email, which I really enjoy, but I'm like, man, you get far enough up the mountain and you can hear them, but it's like, they're, they're back cares? there. Like they're back there. And, that, that, and that's yeah. okay. Um, uh, the, you know, the, the. You know, again, I find a parallel yeah. um, in my life, you know, and I can only speak for myself, not my whole band, but in my life, um, moderation and mediocrity are like my nemesis. I, that, that's, uh, I would rather die than be moderate, mediocre. Um, and, you know, my wife constantly is busting my balls about it because, you know, she's talking about, you know, that I'm too extreme and I, and I don't know how to moderate anything. And she's right. I don't, but I don't want to, <laughs> it's not that I, right. it's not that You're I right. can't, I'm, I'm not interested. <laughs> I, I've seen what moderate and, you know, medium and normal and regular looks like. I'm not, I'm not interested. I'd rather, I'd rather die. <laughs> well. You're not going to do it just to make other people feel comfortable, yeah. you know, yeah. like, and I think, but I, I did want to get back to the beginning a little bit. No worries. Sorry. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to ramble too, but you know, you can edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's, 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 this is how it is. Um, like the, the, the hard work versus, versus talent question, yeah. right? Cause, um, I, I was actually just talking to my little brother just a bit ago and I was like, Hey, I'm going to have Mike on. He's like, those guys like came out of nowhere. And I'm like, I don't think they came out of nowhere. And in my brain, I'm guessing that there were a lot of musicians out there that were highly talented. And just like we see people that are, that are joining our pipeline, super talented people that are just not willing to put in the hard work to make it. So like, what was your experience of the, the hard work versus talent throughout that? Well, time? you know, as, as the, as the hater spirit will tell you, we're not the best at, yeah. <laughs> you know, the most proficient musicians are the most, you know, we, we don't, 
you know, have the, the, the shredder mentality or the, you know what I mean? Like the, we're not really, um, a show offs, you know, we can do what we do and, and, and we're good at what we do, but it isn't something that, you know, um, you know, Angby Malmsteen or Eddie Van Halen would listen to and go, wow, that sounds really hard to do. It's not, it sounds easy to do. Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a, a kind of, a uh, I did the wrap up show for, uh, um, <clears throat> the Howard Stern. Uh, and, uh, that was, that was several years ago. And, and it was good because I got to climb into the arena and, uh, and they opened the phones and they're like, are you okay? And I was like, fuck yeah, bring it. You know, let, let me talk to these people. I, I love to hear from them. And, you know, um, you know, one guy called in and said, uh, you know, uh, this is, this is the, um, the example I really like is, is, uh, cause I, I handled these people. It's not, not a problem. I'm not, I don't really. I'm not made of glass, you know, they can, you can say whatever you want. Like nobody ever says anything in person, but you know, if they want to say stuff on it, yeah. Uh, but, um, this, this guy wrote in and he said, um, you know, what do you, what do you think about people who say that your, your music is, um, it, it is, is, uh, too simplistic and, 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 uh, and, and, and simple and maybe just too easy, you know, too easy to play or, or whatever. And I said, well, that they're, they're not wrong about that. Uh, they're not. It, it is easy. It's easy to play. It's easy for me to play. <laughs> I understand that. Um, right. But I was like, bro, you know what's really hard? And the guy's like, what? What's that? And I said, writing it. Coming up with this shit. It sounds like yeah. anybody could do it, but newsflash. <laughs> Not everybody can do it. And, you know, and then for the, you know, I remember uh, hearing the stories of, of guys in other bands going, I can write those Nickelback songs in my sleep. And the answer I have is like, fuck, do it. It's really great. You know, if you've got that, if you've got it, go do it. Enjoy the, the spoils, you know, like go get it. It's, it fits so easy and so simple to do, go do it. And, uh, you know, naturally they don't. Because it's not as simple as yeah. uh, maybe it's not as easy as my brother makes it look, <laughs> you know. Because right. he, he is a very, very gifted and talented songwriter and super prolific. Like, like I said, a lot of people don't know that we've done anything since like oh five, you know, oh six. Um, right. But he's continued to, uh, you know, um, create and, and produce and, and bring more and more uh, great material for us to to put out to to the people so it, it, it is you know like i said playing eighth notes and and getting up there and and you know it yeah it could be harder right we could be playing in in a band like pantera or or something harder you know we could play more difficult right. music but man this stuff is not easy to write i mean i don't write it <laughs> i can't do it like i there there was a time in my life when you know um i'm in a band with my little brother and there's always that big brother little brother dynamic where it's like i'm always kind of feeling like he's my little brother you know i gotta talk down to this guy and, and it, it was it was quite a while ago now but um you know that i realized he was uh a, a songwriter on a on a global scale in a significant way like he, he because this guy's written with everybody. Like he's, he's been in the room with, he, he would have, you know, nobody would know this, but he's been in room with some, in the room with some of the biggest songwriters and producers in the world, apart from Nickelback. And he can hang with all of them, you know, and I can't, you know, I've been in there. I, I he actually, you know, he brought me into a writing session one time and I hated it. I, I, it was just, it, it felt to me like, um, a friend of mine has a jujitsu gym in, um, in uh, Dallas <clears throat> and he told me about this new drill game that they came up with. And this is what I would use as the analogy for what a, what a high level songwriting session is. You know, we had these three Swedish guys and like, it was just like these assassins. Right. So the, the, but the jujitsu drill is, is the whole class pairs off partners. Right. And they begin to spar. And as people, get submitted there's no time limit as people get submitted the submitted one is out and the submitter the winner of that sparring round stays but that person goes to another pair that's actively sparring and as soon as somebody gets subbed that person's in there you, you, so you just get done put an arm bar on a guy and a guy's around your neck already like and, and that's what songwriting felt like to me 
<laughs> because these guys were just all yeah. over me. It was just coming at it from everywhere. Like it was, uh, it was like a race to, for good ideas. And my brother, he's just, he thrives in that world. And, I, and yeah. I, I went through it one time and I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm not coming in here again. <laughs> you know, just because it's like, I, I, uh, I, 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 I guess I'm used to a little bit more of a, an easy casual pace than that. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, you know, everybody has like a, a vibe, right? And things that you are good at and things that you're not good at. And I think, you know, on team, like we, we run into this situation with you and like your brother a little bit is like, I've had younger guys come on team that some of them have been my students before when I was an instructor in the pipeline. And then you, you have that dynamic and you get on team and you have to like be able to put your ego aside. And I have to be like, these young guys yeah. are fantastic. And there's a lot I can learn from them and yeah. they're super talented Perfect. dudes. And it doesn't matter if I'm their team sergeant or whatever else that I'm supposed to be. Like if they're better at something, I need to put my learning hat on or I need to like take my place in, you know, whatever we're doing in that on that team. And it's not always the leader and, and to get the job done, yeah. you know, to maximize the talent that's on yeah. that. Humility team. goes a long way, man. You know, um, yeah. uh, pride or, or whatever you call it can really get in your way. Right. Well, I, I did want to talk about that, too, that the the. the I was going to tell myself, don't refer to the band as a team. Because, like, in my mind, like, as I try to make these parallels, you like, you're a band. You can, you can. we are. We're a gang or a team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, how how did you all deal with, like, those interpersonal relationships? Because on, on our side, like, I'll, I'll deploy with my best friends. I will, you know, and you're out there for months and months and months with the same people. And sometimes it's hard to explain. Like, you're going to fight oh, your yeah. best friends. You get so uh-huh. sick of them. But, like, you guys are out there. Like, how do you deal with, keeping the band together and, and dealing with each other. And, and over time, like, did you find that there's a certain role that you play, you know, on, on your team to, to make it successful? That uh, has been um, a learning curve um, that has taken decades uh, to um, grapple with, you know, and, and, and to work with because, <clears throat> you know, I can learn how to get along with, with somebody in, in a moment, you know, but we're all in a, in a constant state of change. So, you know, there's always different, different things coming up, but we, we've, as we've grown and, and you, you do, you know, as you get a little older, you just kind of chill out a little bit more and, and, um, you learn to, uh, not so much shoot first and ask questions later. You, you learn how to kind of hold your fire for a moment and, and make sure <laughs> that everything's all right. Take a couple of breaths and then lead with a more diplomatic approach because, you know, the, the thing that I, I, I've been accused of being uh, kind of a hard fucker and, and, and not, you know, considering other people's feelings and a guilty as charged for sure. Cause I, you know, I, I don't know, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what would have happened if I wouldn't have been a sick, scrawny kid with epilepsy, you know, maybe I would be doing what you did or, or do or, or whatever. Um, but my, you know, my kind of understanding is that things are kind of tough all over and, uh, you suck it up because, you know, this could get worse and it will get worse. So, you know, don't be too worried about, you know, the, what's happening to you right now. Cause there's going to be bigger challenges ahead, <laughs> uh, you know? So, it, it, but in that interpersonal way, it's just a matter of um, trying to, to understand first to be understood by others. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of, I think it's, it's, it's one of those things I try to focus on because it's hard to explain to people what that's like. And like you said, like, I think everybody has like an arc, you know, I, I would love to be able to sit here and be, tell everybody like as a, as a 20 something year old getting on the team, I was super understanding of where everybody was coming from. And I, I wasn't an arrogant little, you of course know, you were. whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, well, I was, I was a little fool yeah. of myself, you know, like you, you start hitting those first like steps of accomplishment. Yeah. And you start to think you know everything and you don't realize the the broader context of, of everything that's happening. And so like, you know, you get this like guy that outranks you that says something. You're like, man, F.O., man, you haven't even. Yeah. You're like, I just came back from downrange and did all right. these things. And it's but it, it, it takes a long time. And, and, I, and I think what it is, is over time, it was just like, hey, man, like, how do I make everybody better? You know, it's not all about me. And as you, you transition into that, you know, like that big brother role or, or whatever it is like. I don't have to be the center of attention. I don't have to be the guy. I don't have to be the, the career field shiny penny, you know, to, to feel accomplished. And I think 
It's, it's just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's one of those things. Uh, yeah, we, you, you recognize two things. You recognize your own humility and you recognize other people. <laughs> You know, that, 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 right. that's a big, yeah. a big part of my learning curve was, you know, going, oh yeah, maybe, maybe these, these guys actually can be hurt too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, um, it, it, it's good, you know, and, and you know, it, it, it's all part of the journey, man. You know, you, you learn how to, how to, uh, try to accept others and instead of trying to change yeah. them, how to respect others instead of judging them, you know, these are, these are all lessons that come with the midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think it sounds pretty, you know, mamby pamby coming from a, a former team guy, but you know, that those are the things that, you know, you work on. And, uh, I, and I think one of those things too, is like, I, I, I would always project, you know, myself onto other people and be like, you know, like <clears throat> when, when people come back from deployment and they weren't necessarily special operations, it's it, like, I have these like problems, like it was scary for me. And it's easy to like write those people off. Um, instead of viewing them yes. as individuals that have significantly different backgrounds and, and chemical makeup than you do and all those other things. And like you said, chilling out and just respecting everybody as, as they yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good for your, for us all to learn these things. But um, I mean, as I've done that, that light uh, stalking of you, you, you kind of seemed like you were like the rock of the, the band, you know, you know, it, you just seem like it from the outside. My impression is you would be the, the guy that if I had a tough interview, I would send because you're not going to take yeah. any shit. And also if, if, if someone was running through security, I would send you. Oh yeah. 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 I, that, that's, um, I, I've, yeah, I've, I've, um, I've developed, you know, in, in, in this way. And, and I've been accused of being like the, the glue guy, you know what I mean? Not, not necessarily, uh, out front in the lights, you know, the standout guy or whatever, but kind of, I have my role. It's, it's out of the light show, you know, and, and, and but I, but I am, I'm a, a, a big, uh, a proponent of, of strong leadership, you know, and, and I try to project that as much as I can in, in our world. And we do have uh, a significant amount of people to lead. So when in, in, in like a band setting, as you, as you rise, um, and you, you sometimes will meet people in, in the staff of, uh, you know, in the employ of an artist. And I mean, you know, I don't know what your, uh, what your policies are in language on ones ready here, but uh, the staff are cunts. And um, the, uh, the uh, thing you realize is that attitude comes from the top. So if you're dealing with staff, they're that are behaving in that way you got a pretty good idea that the leadership is that way or at least endorses that behavior um so uh, you know as a result our people are all um they all have a really good understanding that they represent each of us you know they're not um just the guy on the road they're the guy on the road wearing the nickelback jacket so if he's the guy who gets booked or thrown out of a bar or caught with contraband he's no longer him he's us and, and uh, she or he whatever um and and they got to understand that they represent us and and that's part of the leadership that you know we or i tried to, to project it to understand that we are we are a team we are a gang and we are going to be judged as such it's the same way as what you do when you're in the field and one of your guys you know, gets exposed as being an asshole. Well, you all get to be assholes for a while, you know, and, and uh, it's, it, it's really important for everybody to learn that they're going to be judged and they're going to be painted with that same brush, you know? So it's good to teach people to behave because they're wearing, you know, you, you wear the, the flag of the United States and, and, and your branch of service on, on your uniform. Our guys, you know, usually are wearing black t-shirts with our band name on them. And, and but it's the same thing. They represent a thing bigger than themselves and, and they have to be answerable to that. We, we will always tell the students like there's no quicker way to get smoked. Like I will <clears throat> get more angry about a candidate who doesn't even have a beret yet going out onto base and like being a, a dick to like the doctors or, you know, the people out there that they have to interact with. I mean, cause everybody knows who they are. You know, they, they walk with a certain mm -hmm. swagger and, and you know, like 
you're representing us, even though you haven't even made it into the career field yet. You just being a student, mm -hmm. you represent us. And if you go out there and, and, you know, we get a phone call about it, you know, you're, you're going to find out what that means to us, like our reputation. You know, and it's, it's not just us. Like it's, it's all the people we've lost along the way and the, you know, all the way up to the United States of America, right? Like the, the foundations <laughs> of, of who we are and the, the legacy that we're trying to uphold. Um, so yeah, it's, it's super important. And your name is everything, right? Like, and you guys put your names out there. It's, it's not a nickelback, you know, like you're the, the brother of the lead singer. So everybody knows, you know, mm -hmm. Chad Kruger's name mm -hmm. and you're his brother. So like mm -hmm. you know, that reflects on your family and everything. And it's like a super important yeah, thing. You know? Very, very much so. And, 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 you know, again, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just, it, it's, it's all coming back to accountability, you know, and, um, there, you know, the, the kind of, and, and it may be the same, I don't know this, but, um, it may be the same for, for your field, um, uh, of, uh, of expertise, but I find the most swaggery, um, egotistical head up the ass people are the least accomplished ones. It's so early in the pipeline where those people are going to flame themselves out just by being dickheads. It's the same thing in our business yeah. too. Like since we, you know, since we like, whatever you call it, hit the big time, I don't really see any of that shit anymore. And I haven't seen it for 15 or 20 years. Whereas in the beginning, I saw people, you know, goose stepping around, like who now I look back on, they, you know, they, they were nothing. They were, they were not a, you know, they, they, they were presenting themselves as a big, real accomplished thing. And, oh, you know, if you're lucky, you'll get here and you'll see what it's like to make it. And then I look, I look back at those people now and I'm like, uh, oh, that, that's probably as far as they got yeah. You know, and, and it wasn't very far, yeah. you know, so it, it's, it, it's accountability and it's also, uh, you know, showing how we all possess the ability to get in our own way. And, and it's good to, to figure that out and not do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 100 percent the same. Like I, I've met some of the most dangerous people walking the face of the planet and you would never know it. Like they're not. They're not bringing it up. Yeah. They're not, you know, it, it, they're not swaggery. They're they're there to help yeah. most of the time, and they're yeah. also there to learn. And it's that's what you know. Back to the success thing, right? Like those are the steps. And as you know, you get a little bit older, and you learn some of these things. Like that's you put some of that swagger aside, and like if I had to go back, I would beat the crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you could. I, I presume you could. Uh, <laughs> I know I yeah. could. My twenty-two-year-old self would would be um, yeah would be uh, uh, unconscious in a pool of its own sweat if uh if we ran into each other now both physically literally and figuratively you know um just it, it it's it's the journey you, you, as long as you're constantly picking up the weapons as you go along and learning you know as you go along um this it just gets better and better and being old is uh is sort of a side effect of learning yep you hear that um but yeah, a little These bit. Are, uh, smash. Uh, they're smashing up stuff. Uh, oh, not anymore. Okay. <laughs> if it becomes an issue, let me know and we can make changes. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Um, I did want to talk about the distractions, though, because like, I, I know there's kind of like two questions in one, I think. As as you guys were rising up like through yeah. the ranks, yeah. so to speak, there's going to be a lot of distractions. And so like I guess part A of the question is, is how do you keep those distractions from destroying what was potentially a good thing at the time. And then also, um, what was my second part of that question? Now I'm a little distracted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that, that's it. How do you, how do you avoid the distractions? Yeah. Okay. You, you, the second half will come to you. Um, yeah. I, I've always felt like I've, I've had that happen too. And you see it a lot in, in the music industry um, of people who kind of like, lose the plot quote unquote lose the plot and and kind of um you know they kind of flame out or whatever or nobody wants to deal with them anymore whatever it is uh, they, I, I think i think it's a function of forgetting where you are in space and time like i think it's 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 a function of of not realizing what your purpose is in that moment or maybe losing sight of what your purpose is um so what I've always tried to do is go, you know, what, where am I in this moment right now in my career? Where am I? Where do I want to go? Am I doing what it's going to take to get me there or am I fucking myself up? And, 
you know, maybe not drinking at all through my 20s was helpful. I, I, I suspect it was. Um, but I learned that the hard way. You know, when I was 19 years old, I, I, I woke up in a hospital room. You know, like, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, and, and that's what it took to get me to get a little smarter. <laughs> and, and I didn't uh, even touch alcohol again until I was 28 years old and then, you know, went for a while and, and I've since uh, uh, retired permanently. <laughs> but um, that, that, I think, helped me be a little bit more clear eyed going through the, the process, you know, um, that, that, that distraction or the availability of that distraction wasn't a, wasn't a thing for me. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and how do you deal with with like your teammates or bandmates when when you see them going down certain paths? Right. Like we, we always talk about in the team room, it's a it's a beautiful place because communication and feedback is is so harsh. You know, it, it's just it is what it is. Like, bro, if yeah. you're not if you're not yeah. pulling your weight, like we're gonna tell you in very direct way that you're not pulling your weight. So like, yeah. what what. Were you that guy? Yes. In, in the, on the band, yes. you had to be like. Oh, I was bro. the bucket of cold water guy. You know, I was the uh, buzzkill, um, uh, the no joy guy, the uh, doesn't know how to party guy. <laughs> you know, um, uh, just because it would be one of those things where we might get off uh topic creatively or, or get confused or, or or misdirected creatively and and i was always the guy in the studio that would fuck it up by saying hey but I, I i was i was that guy who um would uh would, would often just say hey guys just i see you're going down a, a creative road right now and with your heads down and that's cool but can you just stop and look up for a second and think about are are you still um are are, are you still on the path that that we want to be on, you know, there would be times when we would, if you've listened to our records, you would know that, that, um, we explore a lot of kind of styles, you know, we, we try different things and there have been times when we've gotten so far off pissed, so to speak, that, um, you know, it was usually me that's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, we can't do this because we're exploring different styles and we're, we're trying different things, but we're becoming, something that we're not right now you know we're we're you you could you can stretch out and you can explore new boundaries or you can lose the plot and and turn into something you're not and then you know run the risk of being a fraud yeah get those pakistani banjos out of here that's not who we are <laughs> Yeah, never never gotten too far off. Thank goodness. Um, maybe that's because I, I uh, outed myself as a, as a uh, um, whatever you call it, just a, an insensitive realist or whatever. Yeah, no, all good. Um, yeah, I, I remember. I remember the second half of the question now. Uh, as you go through the process, and um, you guys hit failure, and I think most of us tend to think of failure in like a single event term, and only when you're starting out, right? Mm -hmm but there had to be times when like you guys left stage where everybody tends to think of it as a single thing, but I'm sure throughout your career. And I was just saying like, I'm sure there's times even later on in your career when people considered you like almost at like the pinnacle of your success or whatever, where there had to be times you left stage and you guys were just like, like that didn't feel good or, or, or maybe it wasn't a performance thing or uh, something else. But like, how did you guys consistently overcome that uh, to just keep getting better? Like what, yeah, what happened? Yeah. The, the, um, the, the the one one thing about this you know um that's a little bit different from what you do is that what usually gets in the way of people who do this is they quit simple you know um in doing what you do people quit cuz they can't you know in doing what i do or we do people just quit because fuck it <laughs> you know what right. i mean <laughs> like it, it's it's not i can't it's I won't. And, and that opens up a lot of real estate for you. You know, if you if you just keep going, um, you know, I, I feel like Nickelback is won by attrition, you know, just simply just the unwillingness to surrender. Just we will not stop. We will not quit. We will we will continue to fight. You know, we'll never stop ever. So that really, you know, I, I don't know if if if. if it, it's a function of, of the quality of the songs or the band, or it's just people just gave up and went, okay, okay, we'll buy it. You know, like these guys are never going to stop. So let's just buy it anyway, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because there, there's just a, a complete, um, 
we, we, we just, we consciously or unconsciously, I can't remember, decided a long time ago that, um, it's quitting is just not an option. You know, we don't want to do anything else anyway. You know, um, if, if, if there was, if there was no money in this, we would have did it anyway. You know, it, 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 and that, and that's a big mistake, uh, uh, getting into this, um, is, is getting into it for the money with the money in mind. Uh, that's a recipe for failure, disaster, crisis. Like, cause there's statistically and historically, there's no money in this. <laughs> like if you, yeah. you know, um, I, I've mentioned in other interviews and you might've read it. So if I'm recycling, just, uh, you know, dump it. Uh, but, um, I remember, Earlier in in our career, in my career, um, I was working three jobs at one time just to pay bills so that I could do this because that was ultimately the goal. Like, my goal was never to, you know, work in a lumberyard and stack boards and bricks and haul bags of cement. That was fun and all that. But, um, you know, and I made a lot of great friends and had a really great time. But that isn't where I wanted to end up. You know what I mean? And, and I worked at Starbucks and I worked at Safeway all at the same time. And it was... I did a lot of bus riding, you know, then, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know if you're getting a sense of it, but I'm not afraid to be humbled or humble myself. So I would, but I would ride the bus to work and, um, you know, uh, there, there was one day I recall, I'll never forget it. Well, it was a period cause it stayed up for a while, but there on, on the buses, there's, there's advertising, you know, little advertising placard things up and on the, on the bus and there. And I remember there was one, there's a, there's an agency in British Columbia where I was called Jobs BC, and they're you know the, the, it's as simple as that. The, the agency, what it is, is it's about finding people for jobs and jobs for people. And the the the, the advertisement had like a drum set and like a guitar amp and a guitar on a stand, and it said the chances of your band going platinum are. Point zero zero one two five percent, and I looked at that while I was riding to my job that I, you know, was having fun at, but I didn't want to do, and I was doing that to facilitate a career, which was that, you know. So I was looking at that thing and just, you know, I, was, I had headphones and I was listening to music, and I, I was just thinking to myself, what the fuck am I doing? You know, it, the, the, the seeing stark probability like that, uh, that could lead you to quit. Logically, yeah. you should. <laughs> but the, yeah. the truth is, you know, coming back to it, doing this for the money is a disaster. You know, just, just don't because chances are there won't be any. And that's why I've told my kids they're both musicians, singers, songwriters, artists. And, you know, they, they understand that um, uh, their father's ride through this is not the norm. Far from it. Slightly atypical. Uh, slightly. Yeah slightly atypical and it doesn't matter you know uh, you know you talk to people and i'm sure you've you, you've had these interactions with people where you're like uh you know i just feel really fortunate and really really happy to be where i am and 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 i really have a lot of gratitude you know for and well you worked hard it's like fuck that no lots of people work fucking hard they work harder than me they're better than me and they're not making it so i, I don't you know it, it all comes back to gratitude because it, lots of people work hard you know, washing machines work hard. They, they don't get to sell platinum records either. You know, it's, it's a fortunate and lucky place to be. It just is. But like the, that not quitting and that, that, that single target mindset, you know, we, we talk to a lot of, you know, guys that are successful in our community and all these other things. And, and that uh, there is a theme where people are like, I had a calling or I didn't, I didn't want to do anything else. And that, 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 wanting to do it so bad and not having like a lot of backup plans or like, it's not that we don't think about backup plans, but, like I never thought about quitting. Like it never crossed my right. mind. You know, like once I got that that a, a taste or a sight of the what I wanted to do, and so like, um, it's just one of those things where so many people come in for different reasons. You know, whether it's you know the sign on bonus or 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 money or because my dad wanted me to do mm -hmm. it or you know yada yada yada. But the the people that tend to make it are they're just the ones that are like, this is just what I want to do. Like I don't care. Like you're going to have to kill me to get me out of here. And then there's still like an element of luck, right? Who makes it? Cause there's injuries and all oh, that yeah. other stuff and you know, bad yeah. things can happen to your band, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. definitely it, it's the same. I, I've learned it from martial arts, to be honest with you, that um, if you know, you meet the student whose goal is the black belt 
-hmm. that student usually makes it to blue belt and disappears. Then you meet the student who's the brown purple belt who is like, I don't care about this. You know, this is not, this is not defining my journey because this is a journey. It's a spectrum. I'm on my way to something that will never end. It's the same thing that I was just telling you about is summiting false summits. And then there's another bigger one ahead. It's it's very much the martial arts mindset of um, white belt mentality. You're always going to learn. You're even as a teacher, you're learning, you know, that, that, that's why they put the black belt on people is is because that it's that, that sort of uh, signifies you as an instructor. Now you can teach, you're a professor, you can teach, but you're still going to learn and you will continue to learn for the rest of your life. And that's why, again, it's about many goals, evolving goals. You can never set your sights on one finish. You just can't, yep. you just can't. And, and, and that I think is what happens to a lot of people in both of our worlds who flame out is they realize that there, there isn't that checkered flag, you know, there isn't that finish line. It's going to go on and on and on. Um, I, I think the closest I've gotten to your world is, is doing a podcast. And I'll tell you, I've never wanted to quit anything more times in my life than, than running, doing a podcast every weekend. You know? I, I uh, admire you, man. I, I, I I've, I've given about uh, 10 seconds thought to doing this. And I said, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. When did, when did you start in uh, on martial arts? Um, in my thirties, quite, quite late in my life. Uh, I, um, I got brought into a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym on Maui and, um, uh, it only took one hour on the mat to get me hooked. And now it, it, I, I have that white belt mentality. I, I don't care. You know, people, you know, when, when I'm asked what belt level I am, it's, I'm, I'm happy to say that I, that I wear the purple belt, but I don't care. You know, I, I don't care that the, the thing about, about this that I've learned that I've seen from people is, you, you know, I'm routinely on the mat with just me and a bunch of black belt guys, right. And, uh, and girls. And I've been in these situations where we're working a technique and, you know, one and one guy's teaching and then another black belt with like two or three stripes on his belt. will go, Hmm, I've never seen that before. And I just look over and I'm like, what the fuck you, you've never, and it, that's it. That's it. Yep. It never ends. It never ends. Consistently yep. learning. And that, you know, three stripe black belt guy who's been doing this for 20 years longer than me is still learning now. And if you're not comfortable with that, then this is not a place for you. You know, you have to be willing and open to always learning and understand that you're never going to have all the information. Well, the, 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 whether it's a, a belt or a funny hat or a trident or whatever it is, it's, we were always telling people, that's just a level of responsibility. Yeah. Like they, it doesn't mean that you get to stop learning. That's not, so those people that are like, oh, I just want to get my beret or I just want to get the trident or I just want to get a black belt. It's like, that's, that's nothing. Like if you take away the hats and the belts and everything else like that, you know, the, that person is still going to be dangerous. Like if you meet that black belt in the street, he's not wearing it. Like you can still choke him out. Like, and, and it probably doesn't mean that much to him. Like, I'm sure there's nostalgia attached to it. You know, we all have those things, but it's not that person's entire identity isn't like they don't introduce themselves as like, hi, I'm Rick the Black right. Belt. You know, like, I, I can't imagine. Well, the, you know, the thing about all these kind of designations and levels of achievement is they're bestowed upon you by others. Right. That's right. not your own designation. You know, you don't just wake up one day and go, oh, I just got promoted today. Oh, yeah. By who? Me. It, it doesn't happen, right? It, it just doesn't. You don't get promoted at, at, at your work by yourself either. So y- you have to trust that those superiors above you that are in charge of that understand what they're doing and they're recognizing you're making steps. But again, there's an infinite level of ascension that you can do, you know, and, and you know, if you're if, if there is there is something to be said for setting goals, I think, but big picture goals. I think it's, it's folly, you know, to, to, to go, once I get here, I've made it, you know, once I get to this, once I do this thing, I've completed my journey. It's, it's, it's a terrible mistake. (laughs) 
Yeah. I, I've, I've tried to figure out how to explain this to kids for a long time or people out there, younger, younger people, not kids, grown adults. Um, Like how to like fall in love with the process and not the goal. Like, cause you have to have that goal to kind of know where you're going. Yeah. Right. But like set the goal, forget about it for, you know, a day to day and then just figure out the process to yeah. get there. And then every once in a while re reevaluate to see if you're going in the right yes. direction. Yes. Yes. And, and yeah, that, and that's something that I, I, I know some, some operator type folks, uh, like yourself and, um, you know, the people I know that did Navy, um, uh, the, went to the Navy SEAL program, you know, the, I've had it explained to me that, you know, when they first break through selection, you know, the first thing is somebody senior sits you down and goes, okay, do you like swimming? Yes. Good. Do you like doing push-ups? Yes. Good. Do you like running? Yes. Good. That's what you're going to do. You're going to do a lot of that. Yeah. You're going to do a lot of that. And do you like thinking? Yes. Good. Yep. That's what it's going to take. You know, it, and that doesn't, there, it, nowhere in there was a, if you do all this, you're finished. You know, if you do all this, mm -hmm. you succeeded. It's always a level to level to level to level more. Yep. I mean, we were just at a graduation uh, last week and I always like to tell the kids I'm, or the, the young people, I, I keep saying kids, we're told we're not supposed to call them oh, kids that anymore because somehow okay. it's demeaning. <laughs> yeah. Um, what a world. <laughs> but it's always like, you know, like every time like they get happy about something, it's like you want to be excited for them, but like, you know what's yeah. coming. It's like, hey, congratulations. You did something only thousands have done right. before you and they did it better right. yeah. than you. So. Congrats. Yeah. And, that, and that's, yeah. you, you got to be the bucket of cold water sometimes, you know, and, 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 uh, and it, it's, it's it, yeah, you, you do run the risk of being the killjoy, you know, the buzz kill. Um, that, but that's a badge I'll wear any day just because it's it, the truth. And sometimes, honestly, the truth really sucks. It just does. Yeah. But I mean, but, but looking back though, like the, the, the type two types of fun, you know, when things really sucked, those are, those are the best times, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it, you know, I, I obviously I've never, I've never gone where, where y you all go, uh, uh, physically, but I, I have, uh, I, I, I've gone some places, you know, I, 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 I've woken up in sweat. You know, I've woken up in a pool of my own sweat from putting myself out. Uh, I, I ran while puking. You know, I, I get it. Like, I've, I've, I've passed out from running. I, I understand. You know, maybe that was poor hydration. <laughs> but uh, regardless, I, I've taken my mind there before. And that's why I can understand what really sucks. In, you know, and having to do 8 or 12 hours of interviews, it, it's nothing like waking up in, in a pool of your own sweat. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know what i mean it's 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 like yeah. that's what i always i it's like this refrain that i'm sure everybody's fucking tired of is you know yeah this is work and it's a job but it ain't fucking working in a coal mine so shut yeah. the fuck up because you know the, 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 what you're doing right now is, is something that like a 12 year old kid in a lot of countries would laugh at and would would take that job in a second. Uh, yeah. Now it sounds like uh, you've been listening to me talk to my kids. <laughs> no, you know, I have these conversations all the time. Conversations with my kids. How old are your children? Uh, I got a, a daughter who's ten and a boy who's yeah. five. Okay, you're you're in the zone. Great. Yeah, but it, it is one of those things though. We've you know you've been around the world. You've seen all these. You, you've seen things, and uh, you know talking to your kids who are you know you know my kids are incredibly spoiled and and all these other things compared to us. And it was just like, hey, like you understand, like I saw a, a kid your age taking care of other kids that were younger and then like sifting through trash for food. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, like you woke up in America. You, you already won. won. <laughs> you won the lottery just yeah. by being born in this continent, you know, and, and, and yeah. you know, that that's the fact. And, and you know, it does careful with that one because it wears out <laughs> uh, but uh you know but the but the fact of the matter like my guitar player his him and his wife um <clears throat> they they have a well, his wife has a foundation that does a lot of uh uh philanthropy work in in africa and you know he they get out there in the weeds like they they fly into nairobi and then um fly another puddle jumper and drop into some place that's bullshit and then they get in a car and ride for like a day into further bullshit and you know he he was telling me one day he was walking down, you know, uh, 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 like a 
there's not roads. It's like a path where people walk to get water for miles every day. And he came upon an eight year old kid with an AK 47. And he's like, ah, yep. oh, that's reality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you just, okay. Um, you know, this is not where I come from. This is not what I'm used to. You know, that child needs that to survive. <laughs> like we, we don't, yeah. we don't have this. I mean, we've got AK-47s, but we don't, you know, hopefully we don't need them to survive. I, I suppose there are some uh, extreme circumstances, you know, in, in this country where, where you may, but for the most part, no, you know, and, and this is a regular, you know, occurrence for, for these, these people. And, and, you know, I, I, I that, that's a good perspective awakening. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're fun to sure. have, but maybe not necessary. For me today. <laughs> you're not, yeah. You're not grocery shopping with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and speaking of traveling, like you grew up in, in Canada, yes. like, and, and maybe not, I, I'm pretty sure you didn't grow up like as a rich kid no. or anything, but like when the band started to take off and you guys started traveling the world, like how did that change your perception of, of, everything of humanity you know like i know that's a really big vague question but like it had to change how you viewed a lot of different things including yourself it, it, it really really has um a lot it's changed a lot of i i've i've seen things out there that have led me to seek a higher ideal and i've seen things out there that have let me know that i'm living in the right place and that you know i love to live in the united states because of uh, the freedoms that we have or had <laughs> sorry i don't want to come off as, as bitter uh come to Texas, yeah you know? I, I, but but even so um i do i do really i do really love this country and and i love the the people of this country and i love canada the same way uh but i have i have seen things overseas or, or in other countries that um that we could do better and i've also seen reasons why i want to be here Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Like you hear people talk about sometimes, like a, certain European countries, and 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 all power to them. But like, if you haven't been there and you don't understand it, and like my personal, you know, my personality is like there's security, and then there's there's freedom. And like I I personally would like to make more of my decisions for myself and all these other things. But like, it, it's it's interesting to go see those places and and see the, the the spectrum of humanity, and and also see people in some of these situations that are that are happy and willing to <clears> give you anything that mm -hmm. they have. And then you come back to the States mm -hmm. sometimes and you, you see some of the problems with people that are not like that, but also like all the goodness of the country. It's just, everything becomes like way more nuanced and it's, it's, yeah. You know, the world. Yeah. Wait, this is gray is a good, uh, a good term. It, it, nothing's perfect. You know, no country is perfect. Um, no country is the best country in the world. I mean, it, it, it's, you don't, know that until you get out there. Um, but, uh, there's just certain things that some countries do better than others, you know, and, and freedom is one thing that America does better than others, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah. and, and, you know, the difference between freedom and security is, is the security is something that somebody else gives you. Freedom is something you, you have on your own. And that's what I, that's what I like about, about the U S is that, uh, you, you have the freedom to, um, protect yourself. You know, that ultimately, um, for me, the Second Amendment's a really important thing. And it's uh, it's an anomaly in the world. You know, that it doesn't, uh, the, the concept of uh, of being able to defend yourself with lethal force is something very unique to the United States. You know, the, the Canada, for one, you do not have that. You know, there, there's, um, in, 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 the, the, uh, in the criminal code in Canada, it's, Boy, if somebody tries to kill you and you kill them back, you're the one going to prison, you know, and, and, and the idea of, of lethal self-defense doesn't exist. It's like zero tolerance at school. It's like, no matter what, we don't hit yeah. each other. It's like, well, okay, but have you met a human before? Like, um, but that's not how we work. We hit people, <laughs> especially when we're small, you know? We're rather savage, uh, and and some of that doesn't change as as um, as we get older. And you know, the world's a dangerous place, and and the idea of security is very um, uh, false. You know, I I don't the 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 veneer of law and order to me, you know, is is a very thin one, very thin. 
you see what happens when the electricity goes out or there's a pandemic. You know, I was living in Los Angeles yep. when, you know, when we were having all this stuff going on and, and I can see the smoke from my yard and I can see the helicopters and I can hear the gunshots. The veneer's thin, man. The, the, the veneer of, of uh, law and order and uh, 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 safety and security is largely individual. <laughs> you know, how safe yeah. are you? You know, I, I, you're as safe as you make yourself. Uh, and you, I, I, I'm not interested in depending on others for that. Yeah, well, it's just like the, the belts and everything else that we're talking about, right? Like security comes from someone else. Uh, but the, it's a responsibility. Freedom comes with responsibility, which I think bothers mm -hmm. a lot of people. Uh, but but that's the way it is. Like you're in charge of yourself and, and all these other things. And we're going to stay out of your way and, and you right. do what you do and, and see. How and I love it. that. You know, the, there's so many places in the world um, where I just feel like the government is is like your partner in life. <laughs> I don't want to live like that. Yeah, I'm not interested in living someplace where that whole sort of um, authority creep has been complete, you know, where, where people have been indoctrinated so much that they believe that the government's their friend and, and has their best interests at heart. I, I don't believe that. I just, I don't believe that. Yeah. Well, the government's just people, right? And people are going to be people, just like you said, and we, we crave conflict power and yeah. all these other things. And, and we're all pretty based like that, but yeah, I, I really want to have you back on. I, I would love to sit here all day yeah. and just talk to you because I think you're a fascinating individual. Likewise. Um, Likewise. But, oh, thank you. Uh, but I do, I do, we do have to go. But we do ask before we go one question. We, our, our audience is like, you know, 15 to 18 year olds trying to join the Air Force, get into special operations and do all these other things. And whether it's that or anything else in life that you want to be successful at, we ask for like one piece of advice. So what's your one piece of advice? You know, I, I I think that the best piece of advice that that I can bestow upon anybody, and you know, obviously, I've never tried to you know strive for uh, uh, special operations, so it's it's a little bit out of your your uh, uh, world. But there's a lot of people who are going to have a lot of opinions about what you should or should not do. Be really careful who you listen to and be sure that that person or those people have walked the walk that you want to walk and aren't just cheering from the sidelines or booing from the sidelines. Because as you know, is evidenced by every performer, the number of people on that stage is a lot smaller than the people in that audience. A lot of people watch, very few people do. Be sure that your mentors are people who do. Dude, that was a perfect. And uh, yeah, for everybody out there still listening, uh, make sure you go check out the new uh, Nickelback Adam, uh, album. Get rolling. Get rolling. Rolling on. No, get rolling. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm a terrible okay. at this. Uh, I mean, they only have like 80 albums out there <laughs> yeah. or something. So pick them all up. And then uh, you want to pimp your uh, Instagram um, at all? You know, I, I do have an Instagram, but um, yeah, it's it's at Michael underscore Kruger five five five. But um, you know, it's I don't I try not to be too serious on there. You know, like I don't do like you know obituaries or or or, or deep thoughts or whatever. It's it's more a mode of entertainment for me, and, and that's why like. I post shit on my story. That's totally ridiculous. Like, you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm just very non-serious on there. So every once in a while I'll post something and, um, you know, uh, about a month ago, I posted a, a selfie that I took before I went into surgery for, for a hip. I had a hip flexor torn that I had to be had repaired. And I took a picture of myself because I thought I'd look ridiculous. Like I was wearing a stupid hat and all this shit. And I, you know, said something in the caption about going under the knife again. I love it or whatever. And um, all these people were like so worried about me. And I was like, oh, fuck. I, I didn't. It was just a dumb picture. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to worry anybody or, or anybody to think it was serious because nothing on my Instagram is serious. Nothing, you know, whether it, it, it's politically based, it has to have humor. I don't do it. So, but, it, but if people want, you know, to go on there, it's not like there are flashes of Nickelback, but it's more about 
my life than than Nickelback's life. It, it, and Nickelback has has an Instagram. You can see all Nickelback there all the time. Yeah, I'm sure they can find it. No, I, I follow you and I, I enjoy it. Thanks, and I appreciate thank it. Thank you. So, and and uh, I can't thank you enough. Appreciate you coming on here. This was a really good time. So uh, yeah, if you ever want to do it again, uh, likewise, it, definitely. And we'll if you, if you got guys. a gap, um, uh, let me know. Um, I'm yeah, I'd love to talk to you more. I feel like we could have this conversation for a long time too. All right, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, the, the, I know you got a tour coming up. You're not coming to San Antonio, so I was a little sorry about that. But uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, you. last I checked, you're mobile. Uh, yeah, so be, 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 be there. <laughs> love to have you as my Man. guest. You just told me to, to be a doer and go. not just talk about it. So there, now go. I have to show up. All right, everybody out there, really appreciate it, and we'll uh, catch you next time.